Right off the bat, people said, hey, NL, you got any stories about the Howard Johnson Hotel? Yes. Um, one time, fairly early on, when Kate and I were dating, we stayed together at a Howard Johnson Hotel for like three or four days. Uh, we went to check out on the last day, and we said, how much do we owe you? And they were like, oh, you guys are good. And we said, okay, that sounds fine. And then we left, and we are like, oh... Like, did we just get the hotel stay for free? And we're like, no, 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 it can't be like that. They must have, like, they must run your charge, like, the day later or, like, run it the Monday after the weekend or something like that. God is my witness. Never paid for that hotel room. Three or four free nights. I didn't think that was the kind of thing that could happen at, like, a, a large company that you could slip through the cracks like that. I assume they have some kind of, like, accounts receivable department where it just is auto processed, but, uh, anyway, straight to jail. Wait, I didn't steal anything. They never charged me. That was back in the day where, when I checked out of a hotel, I actually went down on, what, just one second here? Just one second. It was back in the day where I actually checked out of hotels. I am a big proponent now of, uh, just leaving the hotel before 11 a.m. on the day that you're supposed to check out. There has literally never been a single consequence as a result of this. There's no point. There's no point to checking out. You just put the key on the end table, leave a tip for housekeeping, and then uh, go, go on with the rest of your life. It literally doesn't matter. Close, close. You go so far as to leave the key? Yeah, I'm not keeping it as like a souvenir. Oh, that was close. Tipping cultures out of hands? Not really. You definitely tip your housekeepers at the hotel. That one makes sense to me. <laughs> They're cleaning your sheets. Oops. That one, it's hard to have the, the moral high ground on avoiding, I think. Here they get paid by the hotel. We have what, like $2.12 an hour? I read something insane about housekeeping at a hotel. Did you know that apparently they are expected to completely tear down and rebuild the room in like eight minutes per room every single day? That's crazy, man. I, it probably takes me 15 minutes to change my own sheets if I'm doing it by myself. That's not including any, anything related to the towels, the toilet, making sure the TV remote is always in the corporate designated acceptable place for the TV remote to be, replacing the, the two glasses that you never use with two more clean glasses you're never going to use. Oh, 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 he had it too, he had it. Takes me 45 minutes to fight with the fitted sheet every time. I hear ya. I hear ya. For me, um, the fitted sheet is not a problem for me. Replacing the duvet cover takes 70% of all of the uh, sheet changing time. What is a duvet? You know, like a, like a comforter. Then you get like all these duvet covers have like the four snaps inside of them on the corners. So you like unsnap the duvet, pull it out, change the duvet cover. Then you're like inside, you're doing like arthroscopic surgery, trying to figure out like if you've got the right corner in the right spot to get the snap to go. Then finally you get it in and you like pour the rest of the blanket in, zip it up, and then you got to go like this like 80 times. 
Huta, Huta, but it's still like too clumped on the one corner. And God help you if you put like three of the corners in right, but then that last corner you put it in like upside down somehow. She will notice. Come on. Have you seen the bed making competitions? Uh, I have not. I've not seen the bed making competitions. Oh! oh. Important to change the sheets. I don't like changing the sheets, though. Annoying chore. Why is it that the sheets only feel clean for one night, even though I'm clean when I go to bed? Do they get dirty enough to not feel clean? Or because you slept on it for eight hours, did you just become acclimated to the relatively new level of cleanliness? A little bit of both. It's actually static electricity. I could see that. You, you use up all the static rolling around on the first night. It's not the cleanliness, it's the rigidity. Oh, that's another, I bet it, maybe it is a texture thing. Picky eaters be like, no, 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 it's not a flavor thing, it's a texture thing. Okay, we've made it. Oh, he had, he just couldn't get his fingers closed around it. So we go again. It is, mashed potatoes are the one variety of potato I don't go for for that reason. I'm sure a lot of people tell you this and you don't believe them, but I'm gonna tell you this with authority, you are, uh, you're missing out. Mashed potatoes, top tier potato format. Possibly, someone said the best format except for fries. Possibly, I, I would agree, but I might also say, in a restaurant, the mash clears the fries many times. Because it's just such a, a, a good vessel for butter. At home, mashed, you know, falls in the upper third of potato varieties, in my opinion. But most people, myself included, are too ashamed to put enough butter into the mashed potatoes for them to approach restaurant quality. Latkes are S tier. Yeah, like, it, clear your fucking schedule. If you want to have breakfast at... 8 a.m. Make sure you're waking up at fucking 4.07 a.m. to get the latkes done. I like a latka too if you're cooking. <laughs> Bring enough for the rest of the class. It's not enough. You got to grate the whole potato fucking Mr. Popeye forearms. Then you got to squeeze it all out in the damn cheesecloth. That was not even close. What do you think Luda meant when he said, I fill her up balloons? Um, I got to tell you, you got to go to Rap Genius for that one. That seems like an easy one. He fills her up either with the um, volume of his penis or possibly also with his semen. Um, but un he fills her up the same way that a balloon might get filled up with air or with helium. He's drawing a comparison between the fact that he is filling this woman up the same way a balloon might get filled up. That's essentially the purpose of a balloon. Or water, true, or piss. This is good info. What do you mean, piss? Well, you never made a piss balloon before? That's a, that's a classic... Uh, 
water balloon fight technique. We call it stinky balloon. Get 30 water balloons, 29 of them, fill them up from the garden hose, one of them fill them up with a big piss. <laughs> oh, he's got the piss balloon, watch out! Must have been an Ontario thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably an Ontario thing. Okay. Someone said you must be from Alberta in response to the college bit. I'm not from Alberta. That's just, I mean... 15 years ago when I was in university, Canada just had like a, a shared cultural identity. You know, you would meet somebody from Alberta, you're from Ontario, you've got another friend from Nova Scotia, you got another friend from Manitoba, you got another friend from the Northwest Territories. You all knew 50 Mission Cap by the Tragically Hip. You had like a shared culture that you could draw from to inform your behavior. Nowadays, I don't know, it's all, what streamer do you watch? You got Kai Sinat fans interacting with Northern Lion fans, it's all topsy-turvy. Hey, Anel, I convinced my friend in Hawaii that people in the Midwest eat Mountain Dew chicken. So what's, what's Mountain Dew chicken? It would be a chicken marinated in Mountain Dew? That doesn't sound that implausible, to be honest with you. Chicken boiled in Mountain Dew. Yum. <laughs> Mama Liz is so true. Mmm, Raisin Cane's chicken tender dipped in Mama Liz's Mountain Dew hash resin. Oh, baby, we're so back. Love the beard, plus plus, thank you. I think I'm on my uh, twice decadely, maybe I should grow a beard and grow my hair out a little bit kick. I'm not fully there yet, but and I'm sure in like three days this shit's gonna itch and I'm gonna like shave it off. But right now I'm like, what if I fucking just started, what if I spent the summer looking like Raleigh St. Clair? Oh. It's a look. I'm not necessarily saying it's a, a great look for a 35 year old man, but. It is the look of the summer, so true. A big gray beard and male pattern baldness. Maybe like a tweed sport coat and shorts. That's the look, man. Dude. I'm not wearing the, the fryer look. I am not going to be rocking the Petrus. Oh, that was so close. <laughs> it was close. It was, it was, people. You listen to Slut Pop Miami yet? No, I thought Kim Petrus got canceled because of her continued association with Dr. Luke. So instead, I just started listening to the beta band again. Oh, so close. <laughs> again? How are you so hip with it? Well, you stay hip on Twitch, because sometimes you'll be like, hey, I just discovered this new artist, Kim Petrus, and they're like, hey, she's not new, she's been around for like uh, 18 months, and also, we already went through the phase of loving her, and now we hate her, and this is why. Like, if you ever bring up anything, people will be like, here's why you shouldn't interface with that piece of media. So as long as, basically my secret is that I know how to read.
It is a huge advantage. That's true. You can read cereal? Didn't you see me fucking nail those literature questions yesterday? Didn't you see me nail the question about uh, Albert Camus' The Stranger? One of 30 actual classic novels I've read, not just become aware of via the Wikipedia synopsis. What's a preposition? Isn't that like indecent proposal? When a guy in a casino comes up to you and says, hey, uh, I'll pay you a million dollars if you let me sleep with your girlfriend. Indecent preposition. Talk about the plague next. Listen, I don't know all about, you know, I, I haven't read them all. I haven't read them all. I haven't made donations to the plague and the fall and the fucking old gray mare in her stall, okay? But I do know the fall. Or the stranger. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I was talking about Marquis e. Smith. Climb me. Climb me. Again, again. You read Ulysses? Nah, not really. I ain't past the bar, but I know a little bit. Enough to know you want to illegally search my car. Peloton stats today. It was pretty good. I'm still like, I mean, this is how you know this flu was no joke, you know? I, throughout January and February, probably the 90 minute scenic rides averaged like 200 to 210 watts. Finally got back to 189 today, which is the best that it's been since riding post flu. But uh, still, like it's, I'm, I'm missing a gear still, even though I sound a lot better. Like it, it took something out of my, Either my blood or my lungs or my heart or my, my plasma or my glycogen or something like that. Thank you, librarian. What do you need? Nine watt average. 1,018 kilojoules total. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh. You lost that dog you once had? No, man. It has, like, genuine physiological impacts on you. It makes your blood thicker or something like that. I don't know. I'm not, like, a doctor, but something's like that. There's some, there's some vasoconstriction that goes on or something like that. Come on, man. That's, well, you're holding here. You're not making the jump. It's that simple. You must hold here. I didn't believe. I'm still under 180 watts post baby. I know how it goes, man. I know how it goes. But here's, a, you know, if it helps you conceptualize it. I didn't even start the Peloton till one year post baby. So you're still like kicking the crap out of me circa four years ago. the sleeves. Roll up the sleeves. I have this hoodie. Really? I don't know, because I got it from a one-of-a-kind location, H&M. 
find it hard to believe that you'll ever see another one of these out in the wild. <laughs> okay, okay. You can just reach for this. Easily. Easily. Now, okay, this is... This is the hard one. That one wasn't even close. We go again. Oh, it's so tranquil here. You know what's nice is not hearing... I saw a librarian, I saw you post that screenshot of the comments today. There were, there were people saying like, holy cow, he's back at the girder. I just set like two more streams worth of videos on YouTube last night. And there's like, I don't even know, there's like four more hours of girder content coming. So if they're getting cheesed off at the girder, like th those videos were recorded like last Friday or last Thursday or something like that. We got a long, <laughs> a long road. Oh, man. That was a beautiful jump. Hold. He can hold there. That's load bearing. Take as long as you want to set this up. Did you see that PGA golfer who, like, um, he had to score? He uh, had to get it in the hole on, like, a 92-yard chip in order to make the cut. So he like marked his ball, woke up at like 3 a.m. and then took like a thousand cracks at it to practice. And then during the actual events, when he took his shot, he fucking shanked it into like the sand trap off the fairway. <laughs> oh man. That's so good. Okay. We weren't really weren't really oriented properly there, but. How are you watching golf videos? I think because I I am watching videos on sports Twitter, it also pulls up viral videos from sports that I'm unfamiliar with. Yeah, that's how I saw it. It was posted by the official PGA account. Also, I'm kind of like, I, I'm not a golf guy yet because I don't play golf or watch golf, but I very much love the idea of me playing golf. Just haven't had the opportunity to add it into my lifestyle yet. That doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. Oh, that was pretty good, actually. <clears throat> Picked it up at 32. Wish I started sooner. Fuck, I'm 35. <laughs> yeah. It's over. I remember in my frosh week that Queen's engineers were filling super soakers with piss. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and defend the mid-2000s, okay? I'm not going to sit here and be a vanguard and, and 
say like things were better back then when you were getting sprayed with 300 PSI piss just because you happen to be born one year later than the people who are in charge of the fucking events. It was a different time, okay? I wasn't spraying anybody with piss. I wasn't a frosh leader. I also feel like I wasn't getting sprayed with piss because the engineering cultures at Queens is definitely different. Like the art science culture was a lot of like, let's talk about our feelings and like, how are you guys doing today? But the engineers were like getting physically abused and like spiritually torn down and stuff like that. Yeah, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. They used to fill the grease pole pit with horse guts back in the 80s. It's pretty disgusting. We had some interesting engineers because my, my roommates uh, in second year were uh, like frosh week leaders. We had a kegger at our house uh, for homecoming weekend. So like some alumni came. I remember being like, you know, I'm literally 18 years old, underage drinking at the kegger at our house. And I was like, what the fuck is this dude doing here with a jacket that says he graduated in like 1978? Like, this is not your domain, friend. You should be down at the at the Merchant McLeam or something like that. You should be down at the Kingston Brewing Company. What are you doing at our, at our damn kegger? Like, no disrespect, this is 2007. If you graduated in 1977, your ass should not be here. You, you shouldn't be living the lifestyle that we're living right now. You should be spending time, yeah, you should be spending time with your family. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool to have like some pride for your academic institutions if you're interested in that. But like showing up at the at the kegger as like a 63 year old man is kind of insane. That's like some Robert De Niro, dirty grandpa stuff. You know, you're you're only supposed to live like four to six years of your life like that, and then you're supposed to say like the trade off is like. I'm gonna live like a fucking rat for four to six years and then I'm literally never gonna ever do it again. That's the cope. I went to Kingston once and it did not look like a fun city, I gotta tell you that. I mean, being a Queens student in Kingston is actually a ton of fun because in second year and beyond, nobody lives in the dorms. They all have their own houses. So the, the party opportunities are off the chain. The actual, the downtown of Kingston, I think it's pretty, I mean, if you're a university student, I think that there's a lot to do in downtown Kingston, as long as you love drinking. Earl and university section was bumping. That's where when they were building the, the ARC, the new like physical education center, I was walking home from the grad club trivia one night and I saw a drunk motherfucker driving the damn bulldozer. Dude just got in the bulldozer. I guess the keys were still in it and he was like lifting the, the shovel up and down and stuff like that and go zzz, 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 like spinning around in circles and stuff. Oh man, it was, it was pretty lawless. You were there before the Ark, old ass? Yeah, man. When we, were th when we were there, there was no Ark. It was called the PEC, which was honestly kind of a sick acronym for a gym. But the PEC was pretty, uh, it was pretty old when I was there. kind of weird to think you were at Queens when both of my sisters were there. Don't be shy. What's your last name? <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> there were probably like 4,000 kids in my, like my year. So I probably don't know them, but it's possible. Possibly smashed. 
Nah, not likely. Yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about that. cell phone no I'm just speaking truth I mean there's a chance but it's like if I did then I probably already know who you are I probably had like Thanksgiving at your house or something like that <laughs> wouldn't be a it probably would not be a like a surprise situation where I would be like whoa no way I would probably be like whoa oh Kevin hi long time Oh, look at that was smooth with it. Hey, champ. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. College was it was a it was fun. I had a good time at Queens. There were positives and negatives. One of my, even Kate tells me to retell this story from time to time. My third or fourth year, I had a like, the great financial crisis hit and a lot of classes that I wanted to take that worked towards my major just got pulled because there wasn't like enough interest to keep running them from like a profit motive. So I was like, fine, I guess I'll just knock out some of the stuff that I need to do. Like some of the credits I need to round out my diploma. So it, 08 or 09, I took an intro to marketing class for non-business majors. So we only got the people that were like, I'm basically taking this class for fun. I'm not taking this class to ever be like part of the industry. So it was all for idiots, myself included. And I remember I had a, um, you had group projects, right? And the group that I got assigned to had one of the, I, I guess he was a himbo. Like in the pre-himbo era, era, he was a himbo. He was like a tall, hot guy who was dumb as a, like a bag of rocks, but was kind of like, he, he was easy to read, I guess. You were never like, hmm, what's his motive? You were like, his motive is he's hungry. So he's like, he's eating bread out of a bag full of bread, you know, like that's what he does. So I just remember like, one of the group meetings, he was like, you, you guys got to come. We're throwing a party this weekend. It's beach themed. We we're like, what does that mean that it's beach themed? Because it's like January in Ontario, Canada. And he's like, well, we got tarps and we staple gun the tarps to our floor. And then we're getting like truckloads of sand and filling the house with sand. So it's like a real beach. And then we were like is your landlord okay with that? And he was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's like gonna be cool with it. And then we showed up at his house and it was like, he did not skimp on the fucking sand, dude. Like it was not like a thin layer of sand. The whole thing was fucking coated in sand. So I don't know, I'd probably stay for like an hour. It wasn't really my scene, but I was like, man, he really went all out with this party. And then like a week later when we had our meeting, he was like, guys, I can't make it to this one my fucking bitch landlord is taking me to a small claims court or something like that because of the sand. And we were like, what do you expect was going to happen, man? There must have, I don't even know how to describe it. There must have been like a quadrillion grains of sand in there. Daphne Dean coming back with a vengeance. You're a real Kingston head. Daphne Dean was a, a landlord for many student houses who we were advised by like the staff at our university not to rent with because the rental contracts always said stuff that was like illegal. It was like, you know, you cannot have visitors at your house. You cannot like make any noise past 7 p.m. and stuff like that. That's not illegal. It is here. Oh, we were close, man. You cannot fill the house with 
tons of sand. Oh. In Ontario, if there's anything illegal in the lease, you can just ignore it. Yeah, it's a it's a common Ontario dub for sure. That's why like when like we had a seminar or something on like renters rights before we all moved off campus, which I appreciate the school for doing. And they were like, you know, most of you probably don't have pets, but just so you know, in Ontario, if you ever see a lease that says like you're not allowed to have pets, it's considered like unconstitutional or something like that. You can have pets anyway. And if they ever took you to court, you would win. So I was like, damn, that's, that is based. And then that has informed the way that I have acted, you know, prior to owning a home that informed the way that I acted as a renter, even when I was in BC, like four apartments ago in BC, our landlord was like, if this is a no pets building. And then like a month later, Kate was like, I want a cat. And I was like, let's send it. So Ontario gets to have good renters' rights, but BC doesn't. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna let Ontario mog us like that. Like what are they gonna do? Exactly, and you know, you already know how this ends if you've been listening for a while. But when we moved out, our landlord was like, "Hey, did you guys have a cat? There was like some cat hair on the curtains." And I was like, "Yeah, we have two cats." And then she was like. Oh, did you know like it's a no pets building? And I just went, oh, no, sorry, I didn't know that. The end. Oh, that was close. Didn't she take your deposit? No, different place. Another, the other place, it just goes to show you're subject to the whims of the insanity of your landlord sometimes. The other place we left is super clean, except like the oven wasn't 100% clean, so they took 100 bucks out of the security deposit, which is basically, as far as I'm concerned, is theft. But I was also like, I don't, you know, for 100 bucks, whatever. Mm -hmm. Hold. But that still, again, is like the same sort of situation. I remember when they did the walkthrough. It was me giving them the walkthrough. And I was so sure, because like I had this acoustic foam duct tape to the my uh, office wall. And when I ripped it off, it took off, it, it took off like a fuckload of paint and drywall. And then I color matched the paint and painted over it with like seven coats, but it still looked like fucked up, clearly fucked up. And when she took, she poked her head in the office and she was like, yeah, looks good in here. And then she opened the oven and basically took like a gloved finger and was like, what is this? Could I get you to clean the oven, please? And I was like, yeah, we already moved. I'm not going to do that. And she's like, okay, well, I guess we'll just take some money out of your security deposit. And I was like, oh, whatever. I probably did like $300 worth of damage to the wall. So we'll just consider it a win. Yeah. Yeah. Oh! Common rent or dub? It fucking pissed me off, because I was like, of course I did some damage to the unit. We were the only people who've ever fucking lived here. <laughs> I've never, I ain't never even seen the lady who lives here, man, or who owns the place. Sometimes we get her mail, that's about it. Who the fuck else is going to damage the walls? Of course it was us. Let's go. Let's go. Hold. Hold. And the so-called hardest jump in the game. Not even close. Need way more than that. <laughs> 
sauceless. Hey, no, I believe in you. You can do this. Thank you, Faint Bunny. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is this past the bags? I'm happy to report it is past the bags. I, uh, I hope to never see the bags again. Because, like, if you ask me how to do the girder, I can do the girder. Because we spent so much time on the girder, I had to learn, like, a method. The bags, I feel like we just stuck at it for two hours until eventually we got lucky. You ever grown out your beard past stubble? Yeah, I rocked like a little bit of a beard first six months of my child's life. Looking back in photos, I look fucking horrible. Straight up. But I can't tell, there's a lot that was going on at that time. I was like 40 to 50 pounds heavier than I am right now. Um, I was getting like very, very little sleep. So I looked really tired. Now, I, I don't know if I would throw the baby out with the bathwater in terms of the... Of, like, say, never grow a beard because I grew a beard once, but... Might not be the beard's fault, I don't know. New dad syndrome. <laughs> How was your ride today? We're getting there, we're getting there. Would you ever go beard, no mustache? Yeah. Oh. I don't think so. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a great look. The thing that is annoying about a beard, which you only know if you've grown a beard, is that it seems like if you were like 10 years old and you were like, how do you grow a beard? You'd be like, just shave everything from your jaw down. But you that's not actually how it looks. There's actually like a little trick. Because if you just shave from like your jaw down, it looks fucking psychotic. I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't look the way that a beard is supposed to look. So you, what you have to do is go like, you put a finger or two on your Adam's apple and then you shave in like a, like a radian around that point with that being like the midpoint of the arc and that is annoying just have a barber line it up and maintain the line that's one way to do it can I also say something without offending people I also feel like 35-year-old um, guys with well-maintained beards, it's like, it's part of a tribe that I don't want to be a part of. What do you mean by it? I don't know, it just like, it almost became kind of like a, a slick look. It became like a, it went from being like, I'm lazy, I'm gonna get a beard, to like, I'm like a realtor. I'm gonna have like a really well-maintained beard. Like the culture has changed around beards. I look 17 without one. But like with one, don't you just look like a 17 year old kid with a beard? Like, your eyes still have the sparkle in them, right? <laughs> it's like a 40-year-old guy wearing tight shirts and skinny jeans. That's kind of what I'm getting at. It's like almost, I feel like, uh, 
like beard core on a middle-aged man has kind of become like CEO wear. Like it's as much a part of the CEO drip as like a Patagonia vest and then like hiring Shaggy to play at a concert right after you lay off like 20% of your workforce. I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. I'm just saying th those are the headwinds that I'm working with that are like pushing back against me a little bit. Salt and pepper beer. <laughs> Salt and pepper beard dipped in Mama Liz's beard oil. Oh! I don't know. We'll see. I guess if it looks good, it looks good. That's why I want the Rally St. Clair, dude. Like, I don't, I don't want the Imagine Dragons, like, street magician type beard. Mama Liz died today, or maybe it was yesterday. I see what you're doing. Albert Camus the Stranger dipped in stream inside joke references oil. Feels good to be able to hit that register again without coughing. Oh! Hold. <sighs> Start higher. But don't hit your head. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Bro gave up. Ugh. Hey, Anel, you ever going to come back to Kingston? Yeah, I tend to come back like once every two or three years. My parents visit us in Vancouver more often, which I'm very appreciative of, um, because sometimes traveling with a smaller child can be uh, annoying. But I like to go back once every two or three years. I mean, I, I like Kingston. It changes a little bit every time I go, but I guess every place kind of... Changes. When the hell did you guys get rid of the sleepless goat, bro? That thing was like an institution. Did it stink a little bit? Yeah. Was there dirt in the grilled cheese sometimes? Yeah, but like, it was an institution, bro. You should go see the eclipse there. Bro, my parents have been talking about the uh, eclipse like crazy. They said there's supposed to be half a million people are coming to Kingston to watch the eclipse. Might actually be like one of the most highly trafficked days in, in Kingston tourism history. For reference, the city has like less than 200,000 people on a normal day. Oh, I hit that fucking top. Is it the best place to see it? Apparently, it's it's one of the best places to see it. That's what I've been told, at least. Sure, apparently, 500,000 people are coming to see it. It's not like I'm going to get the word out. I didn't even know the eclipse was happening, man. So what what's the difference between this eclipse and the um, the one that was like seven years ago where Trump was looking at the sun? I'm not trying to be one of those guys who's like nothing ever happens. I just I genuinely don't. Is this is this a bigger eclipse? It's got a different path. Oh okay, well, that makes sense. I can understand that. The sun is woke now.
It's the woke eclipse. For two minutes, the sun will turn into the daughter. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did you hear about this one, Kevin? Did you hear about this one? Even the eclipse went woke. Oh, man. Gay Leno, that would be a funny bit. So I was, I was sucking on this guy's cock the other day. Did you see this? Did you see this, Kevin? Did you see this? I was sucking on his cock until he came in my mouth and I swallowed his cum. Did you see this? <laughs> Did you see this, Kevin? We said gray Leno? What the hell, bro? He's like the grayest man out there. Have you ever seen his hair? I'm going to South Korea to live in Daegu and teach at a Hagwon. Any advice? Yeah, you know, begin with the end in mind. Worst, best case scenario, you enjoy it. Worst case scenario, it's only a year. It's not that long in the whole scheme of things. Make the best of it. You will probably never have the work schedule that you will have in Korea ever again. I worked two to... 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. Fucking cooked working schedule, bro. But like it was kind of nice because 10 p.m. rolls around. You're like, let's head out to the bar. If you sleep in until 11, you still got three hours before work starts. Didn't you have to do lesson plans? Uh, the shit kind of like wrote itself. <laughs> Hi. My name is blank. I'm fine. Thank you and you. I'll have a hamburger, please. Like it's once once you got the the gist of it. Then, like after you did like a month of teaching, you could you could teach it with your eyes closed for sure. You hit the Benjamin in South Korea? No, I'm pretty sure it's a good way to get thrown in prison, like, for life. I literally almost just let go. That Korean Kush hits different? I bet it hits fucking horrible. Like, you, A, should not be smoking it in South Korea because they'll throw you in prison for the rest of your life or make an example out of you. But, like, I bet it's fucking dirt, weed, oregano, fucking Italian seasoning in a Ziploc bag. That's the best. <laughs> when it's all stems. Look at this shit. Look at, look at this nugget, bro. There's not a single crystal on this bitch. It's so pure. This shit is so fucking ass. Oh, I almost did a flip there. I don't participate in weed. But I find it hard to believe that it's not like a weed golden age right now. Isn't the problem that the weed is too good? One of my friends who is a, a devout weed head and uh, purchased predominantly from illegal dispensaries before it became truly legal in Canada... He said that it's actually better now because in like 2014, it was the Wild West and you would buy some shit with like an MS paint label at an illegal dispensary. You'd get home and eat it and then you'd look at the bag and it would be like, that's 500 milligrams. Nowadays, the government stepped in and said like fucking the maximum single dose is like 10 milligrams or something like that. He, he was telling me a story about how he, he ate an edible before he went to a concert and remembers nothing about the concert and then woke up the next day for work and he was still high. And like that sounds funny and it is funny, but at the same time, there was like a fucking Thursday morning or something like that. Like that's scary, man. 
dude was high for like 16 hours off of some shit that cost him $7.99 from a store. This is a forever pack. <laughs> oh, man. Is, it, is there a dose of weed that if you smoked it, you would live but be high forever? Like at some point, is there a, a mega dose large enough where your brain just goes like, it, it bootstraps its own cannabinoids or something? Like it starts its own fucking farm in there? <laughs> You don't look so good. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, like, like auto brewery syndrome, exactly. Like when one of your friends boofs a beer and then all of a sudden, like, his colon just starts making its own alcohol back there. Oh, man. They had to make that shit legal just to just to stop the innovation, man. Has anyone ever boofed? I feel like it's a joke. I bet people have done it, but it is one of those things that I think is overstated. The fact that in university I knew Nobody who had ever boofed. That to me means the amount of boofers in the population must be like one in like 10 million or something. What is boofing? So this is one of those things where like you don't need me to say it, but I have to say it. It's something you should not ever do because you could easily suffer permanent health consequences, including death. But it's when you uh, drink alcohol out of your butthole because it gets you drunker faster and cheaper. Yeah. Oh, butt chugging. <laughs> yes, yeah, also known as butt chugging. I went to a Queen's party where people were butt chugging. No shot, man. I don't I don't know if I buy it. Really? There were like four dudes set up in one of those fucking University Avenue <laughs> parlors <laughs> with funnels going into their butthole. I don't I'm not sure I believe it. Yep, I swear it. Maybe maybe the I guess I'm part of the older generation at this point. Maybe things have changed. All we were doing was playing variations on Edward 40 hands, where you tape two 40s to your hands and you can't untape them till you finish the 40s. And then you play Edward 40 hands circle jerk dipped in Mama Liz's chili oil, where you tape a 40 to your hand and then you tape that hand to another guy's hand who then has a 40 in his other hand, which gets taped to another guy's hand, and you can't break the circle until at least one person finishes their 40, so that you can finally just be like a line of people instead of eight people in a circle. Dudes will do anything to hold hands. It's pretty, I, it, I had a fun time. I was still tied to my friend when he started throwing up off our back deck, but that's just like, you know, just part of the culture, bro.